All right, got a little bit of time. I'm going to answer a few questions in my vehicle. Okay, so you hired a lawyer in 2018, settled with the school district, and received as, or as I guess, either a settlement or a hearing decision a uh, two-year private placement at a dyslexic school at the district expense. So now you're at the end of that two years. So what do you do? Well, the school system requested to evaluate. And so let's go ahead and walk through this process. So you, you utilize a due process system because there was not consensus on your team and because you felt as your child's advocate that the school district had failed to provide your child a free and appropriate public education. So therefore, you triggered one of the many dispute resolution options. The choice that you chose was due process. Now, in the course of your due process case, you either reached a settlement or you ended up having to go the distance and get a um, determination from a hearing officer or administrative law judge, possibly a federal judge, um, on two years of private placement at a dyslexic school. So you're talking about, and, and I'm, I'm just theorizing here for the benefit of other parents and educators that are watching this. Um, so I'm imagining that as part of this process that the some of the reason it was two years is because they were factoring in uh, what would be remedial or compensatory services. Uh, and, and that's where that came from. So you're coming at the end of it. And I can tell you that settlement agreements, when you go through due process, typically have a one or two year lifespan, depending on the nature of what it is that you're negotiating. Okay. Now in some states, North Carolina and Texas immediately come to mind. You have a one year statute of limitations. Um, in most states, it's two years. And that's why sometimes the relief that we're requesting as attorneys in these situations can be expanded out um, and we can reach into uh, a secondary school year. Most of the time, it's a calendar year um, is about how long that this lasts. Why is that? Well, because an IEP changes every calendar year. And at that point, that's typically the lifespan of a mediation agreement, resolution agreement, due process, settlement agreement, um, any kind of corrective action. But there are mechanisms to expand that out, okay, depending. So you're at the end of that. So the school district would naturally um, want to evaluate. And also keep in mind that if, if your child's at a different school at public expense, even if it's, if, even if it's, I'm not going to say court ordered, but let's say settlement ordered, then at that point, it doesn't stop the process from continuing. The school district still has a responsibility, even if your child is somewhere else, if they're paying the tab, they still have a responsibility to provide your child with a free and appropriate public education, even if it is settlement ordered, and even if it is something that, that the IEP team determines on their own that this child requires to be placed over here at, our, at, at public expense. So the, res the legal responsibility to provide a FAPE is still there, hasn't changed. But you haven't seen them all the time because your child's somewhere else. And, of course, you're sitting there going, well, I think one more year would be a benefit. You need to start being proactive and start having that conversation with the school district now. Because I can tell you a couple factors have already been, been thought about by your school district. They've already factored in her to or your child's tuition. Um, no, yeah, they've already factored in your child's tuition for the last school two two school years, and before they start discussing next year's budget, you have an opportunity to make that request to the IEP team for one more year, and it's far more easier for them to agree because that's where your child is currently. And with regards to financials inside the school district, that kind of stuff, once you got your foot in the door, it's just so much easier for the administration to agree to the status quo because they're already, they've already budgeted for that stuff, okay? So even though, and this there's some confusion with regards to a school system when it comes to things like this. So I, I need school people to also listen to this and consider what I'm saying. The data that supports 
the future determinations of your child's next IEP, the next school year IEP, is going to be based upon where your child is currently being served. And everything in special education is supposed to be data-driven, all right? So if the school system doesn't have data um, because your child hasn't been in, in, in their public school for the last two years, well, they can only rely upon evaluations in your current setting in order to make a future determination of what a FAPE looks like for your child. And that is a benefit to you. Now, what you need to do is make sure that the, chi- that, the, that the school that your child is currently attending has good data, has very good data, to support that your child has made tangible progress and tangible gains comparative to what existed prior to. Because you can do a comparison of where your child's currently at and where your child was um, prior to the due process. And that would be what the IEP team would need to use to make a determination for this next school year. So it's going to be a data-driven decision. And yes, I would not be afraid of evaluations if your child's been making progress where your child is at. And if you're confident that your child's been making progress in this current private school but publicly funded location, then you need to get with these people and ensure that they are doing their job in maintaining good data collection to support the IEP team's review and then your request to to continue in the current uh, uh, placement for one more year. And I would let them know, I think one more year is what my child requires. And then, you know, design a good transition back to the public setting with supports um, so that we're not losing any of the progress gained. But I think that you're in a good position to make that happen. So I would I would start now. We're, we're knocking on the door in February. So it's going to take a few months. Sign the consent to evaluate. I would absolutely ask them to send competent people over to observe your child in the private location. I would get with your private location and ensure that they that they have maintained good data on your child that will support the gains um, that were projected or expected because the school needs to see that. And then when the IEP team convenes with all of this new evaluation data and I would have representatives from the, the, the school where your child is currently attending, participating in this IEP meeting, that's where it's brought up, okay? And they're going to look at, naturally, they're going to look at multiple options, and that's serving your child within the public school or continuing uh, in the status quo of where your child is currently at. And then at that point, if the school system is not making a data-driven decision and they're wanting to sit there and use your child as a guinea pig in some half cock program that they're throwing together inside the public school, then no, it puts you back in a great position to, um, to assert, let's say, stay put or to file a due process complaint um, because the IEP team decision was not data driven and, and the, the data um, does not support trying an unknown when your child's being successful in a known quantity. Do you see what I'm saying? So this whole thing of, well, I, I went through due process and was successful once, but I, I, I you know, but I, I don't know if I'd be successful again. Now, the one part of your question that, that you know, every state's different. So, yes, I, I don't, what sort of baffles me is why didn't you get your money reimbursed during your first due process? Because it's your parental right to have your attorney fees reimbursed or paid for uh, in these kind of processes. So... You know, the fact that you got your two years at the private school, but it doesn't sound like you got your your attorney fees reimbursed or paid for. I mean, you know, I believe in this law and I fight to have those fees paid by the school system. I mean, it's in the law. It It, it is there as, as an equalizer for parents. So... And I don't pity schools in situations like this um, because they have every opportunity to avert a due process or a mediation uh, or my involvement, every opportunity. And, you know, if they don't do it, then I don't think the parent should have to sit there and absorb the cost to have to advocate for their child. Um, 
but that's that I wouldn't be afraid of the future and I would just make sure that you have everything locked into place and if you have a very good advocate that is effective that knows how to communicate and isn't going to sit there and pour gasoline on the situation then yeah I, I would recommend getting one um, but at the same time I, I just feel like you're gonna be able to navigate this and uh, um, but don't fear the future okay just prepare for it 